Hi there, I'm Stephanie, the Community Education Coordinator at KC Trees, and today we'll be celebrating Phenology Friday, where I'll be highlighting a tree species that's undergoing an interesting phenophase, and invite you to do the same at home by looking at the trees uh, in your neighborhood or in your yard that are experiencing interesting things. The term phenology basically refers to nature's calendar. So it's the timing of recurring plant and animal life cycle events and how those are influenced by weather and climate. Uh, so when we talk about a phenophase, that's one of those life cycle events. So for a deciduous tree, that would be something like leafing out, uh, breaking bud, or fall color or fruiting, like we look forward to this time of the year. Uh, this Friday, I'll be highlighting a tree species that may look like a tropical import, uh, but it's a native tree to our forest and is actually a plant with the largest uh, edible fruit in the United States and a member of the tropical custard apple family. Asamina triloba, often known by its common name pawpaw, is a tree species that's native to the understories of our forest in this area and often forms patches or thickets where you'll see a bunch of them all together in one area because they send up suckers from their root systems and form kind of a clonal grove. Um, however, the species is becoming more popular in the district through programs like our community tree planting program where communities are asking for uh, the species to be planted and especially in school gardens where school garden coordinators are looking for a low maintenance fruit tree uh, to provide some benefits. So pawpaw have these large tropical looking leaves that can grow up to a foot long with a smooth edge with no teeth or serrations along them. And these leaves are an important uh, larval host species for a zebra swallowtail butterfly, but are actually unpalatable to our uh, white-tailed deer in the area. But if you're lucky, this time of the year, the scene stealer isn't the large uh, tropical looking leaves of the pawpaw. It's actually the large fruit that you can see here. So pawpaw fruit is kind of a lumpy large fruit that can be from two to five inches um, long. The fruit is often born in clumps, much like a banana and weighs down kind of the delicate branches of the pawpaw and embedded inside the fruit, um, inside the flesh, are a couple large black seeds. The taste of pawpaw varies widely uh, among the individual fruits, but a lot of people agree that it tastes somewhat between a cross of a banana and a mango, kind of in the flavor. And the texture is kind of custard-like and creamy in consistency. Um, so ripe fruit, can be a variety of colors. So unlike a banana, you're not gonna use color to dictate when the fruit is ripe. Uh, they start off this green color and then mature to yellow or brown. Uh, but the real test of a mature fruit uh, is when they get to the consistency of a soft peach. So you wanna squeeze that fruit and see if it's soft like a peach and that's how you can tell when it's ready to be eaten. Um, and oftentimes mature fruit will give and break off from the branch once you touch it. So these still have a little bit more to go. So if you wanna try pawpaw fruit for yourself, uh, just remember that only the ripe fruit are palatable and you're not gonna eat the skin or the seeds. You're just gonna eat kind of the pulpy flesh within the fruit. Um, as uh, they always suggest with a, trying a new fruit, it's always good to try it in maybe a small amount and see how you react. Um, but if it's delicious tasting to you, um, there are a number of recipes online where you can use the natural consistency of the pawpaw fruit to put it in custards, ice creams, or smoothies. So now that you're wondering where to find this delicious treat, um, unfortunately I have to tell you that it's not a given that any pawpaw will actually bear fruit. So pawpaw flowers are pollinated by flies and beetles. Um, and they're not self-fertile, so those large clonal groves uh, can't fertilize themselves. So a lot of times you can see a pawpaw uh, in the forest during this time of year and it's not bearing any fruit. Um, our pawpaws in the rain garden here at Casey Trees got a little extra help with some hand pollination and that's becoming an increasingly popular option for people that want to guarantee to have pawpaw fruit year after year. So pawpaw fruit typically ripen in early to mid-September and only last a few weeks. 
Uh, so we hope you get a chance to sample this fleeting, uh, delicious treat. And we hope you've enjoyed our time uh, talking about Phenology Friday. If you see something interesting happening to the trees in your neighborhood or in your backyard, we hope you'll snap a picture or tag at Casey Trees with the hashtag uh, Phenology Friday, or consider joining us in our phenology monitoring efforts uh, through the USA National Phenology Network. And you can find more information about that effort at www.caseytrees.org slash get involved slash citizen science.